The sheer number of food recipes in Eternal Return can be overwhelming, but honestly, you could get by using just these five food recipes for the rest of your time playing the game. The first recipe I want to cover today is actually going to be baked potatoes and baked carp. Now the reason why I lumped these two together is because they're essentially the same thing. Baked potatoes and baked carp both craft out of heated stones. Additionally, they also give you two food items per craft, so you're going to be getting six total per set of heated stones. They also heal you for the exact same amount, and you'll end up with the same quantity anyways, so they're essentially the exact same thing, they just use slightly different materials. The reason why I wanted to start off with these two is because to me, these are the two essential food crafts in Eternal Return. This is a good amount of food with decent healing that is readily available all throughout all points of the game. The only thing you're going to be needing that is at all contested is a lighter, but one single lighter gets you six 600s total, which is very, very good rate for food, while additionally being a lot of food so you're not going to be running out after just one or two fights. It's no secret that lighters equal food in this game, but baked potatoes and baked carp are two of the most essential food recipes that you should know. Carp is found in pond in massive quantities, it's also found at the top side of cemetery, and the top left side of forest. Potatoes can be found at the top side of pond, the bottom right side of temple, the top left side of temple, and the far left side of alley next to the teleporter. Now the reason why potatoes and carp are so good as food recipe materials is because you can see whether or not they're there through the fog of war. Potatoes will disappear if they've been harvested and they do not respawn, and baked carp does have a cooldown over it that you can see even through the fog of war. So essentially what baked potatoes and baked carp do for you is if you have any lighters whatsoever, which you should be picking up whenever you see them to at least carry one or two for mid to late game food, you can easily head over to either any of the carp spawns or any of the potato spawns, find some stones because those are also just around the map somewhere and you can easily make some good food. Now the second set of recipes I want to talk about are actually pretty similar and that's going to be oriental concoction and boiled eggs. Similar to baked potatoes and baked carp, each craft gets you 2x600, which to me is sort of the baseline for pretty good food. Now the major difference between boiled eggs, oriental concoctions, and the two we just talked about is the fact that you're going to be needing eggs and oriental herbs, which are not resources you can find on the map through the fog of war, so it's a little less reliable than baked potatoes and baked carp, but instead of going out of heated stones, it crafts out of boiling water, so if you wind up with some extra boiling water, if you only really have access to water, but you also have oriental herbs or eggs at your disposal, these are two extremely convenient craft recipes that you should be familiar with. One of the other essential food craft recipes in this game that absolutely everybody should know is going to be healing potions. Healing potions provide two 700s per craft, which is a very good rate for food. Additionally, the recipe is more simple than it looks because oriental herbs and flowers are often found in the same zone between forest and pond. Both of these zones have both flowers and herbs in the zone, so you can make orchids quite easily. From there, you'll only need to find glass bottles, which already come in quantities of two. So you get two orchids and two glass bottles, which guarantees you four healing potions for just a two zone craft. If you happen to find yourself with extra glass, you might want to route towards forest or pond to try and make a bunch of healing potions. Additionally, these resources are not super contested for other food recipes, so they tend to still be around even if you're looking for food in the late game. Now the next food I want to talk about is actually something that is very near and dear to my heart, which is of course mocha bread. Much like healing potions, mocha bread provides 2x700 per craft, which is of course very good rate for food. Mocha bread's craft recipe is going to be mainly crafting out of just coffee and alcohol since you start with two bread already. Mocha bread is mostly crafted on routes along the south side of the map. If you're going hospital to cemetery, you're going to be getting alcohol at hospital and coffee in cemetery. Additionally, factory cemetery is the same way where you can also get alcohol over here in factory. Routes that tend to go on the south side of the map tend to hit these three zones at least once or twice, so it's pretty frequent that you can make mocha bread pretty early in the game by just crafting a quick little coffee liqueur and combining it with your starting bread. A couple early mocha bread can swing some pretty essential fights, so I very highly recommend this food and you should absolutely know this recipe. Now the last essential craft that we need to talk about is all of the food that crafts out of butter. 
Butter is made by combining milk with branches. Now, butter food in general is actually exceptionally good rate. You're gonna be getting 733s if you combine it with chocolate, 650s if you combine it with potatoes, which are really easy to find, as well as honey, which is also in a lot of places on the map, and you get 2x per one you pick up. So this food is generally pretty good, and if you're desperate, of course, you can make pound cake out of your starting bread, but in general, the food is very good rate. However, the issue with butter food is that you do have to gather those branches. Gathering branches does take time, then you have to craft the butter afterwards and then craft whatever it is that you're gonna craft. And if you wanna make more than just two, you're gonna have to go find some more branches. So it's kind of a time sink. However, most of this food just requires that you find milk because bread is pretty easy to get. Of course, potatoes, very easy to get as well. Honey, also very easy to get. So a lot of these things are pretty easy to get. The only thing you're really gonna need to find is milk. And of course, the other main cost is gonna be your time collecting all those branches. Butter food is, however, one of the most essential recipe sets in the entire game. You should know how to make butter because it can provide you a lot of food for just some milk. So you should know when to pick up milk whenever you see it, whenever you need it. And that just about covers it for all of the essential food recipes. Legitimately, you could play the game forever only knowing the recipes I just taught you, and you'd be in great shape. Just finding a good amount of 600s, 700s, and some other stuff similar to that is pretty much the only place you need to be in order to be healthy in Eternal Return. These resources are not extremely hard to get, and generally, they can provide you with a lot of food for a little bit of investment. Of course, there are plenty of other recipes that are very important in this game, and if you have a little bit of extra time and you want to learn a little bit more about food, let's talk about those right now. If you want to go a little bit more in depth on food theory in this game, we should talk about early game food. All the recipes we just covered are mostly mid to end game food as they do take a little while to craft. Blue craft recipes for food tend to take a while. so. For early game food, it actually is to your detriment to spend a lot of time crafting really good food because it slows you down significantly as these craft processes actually take quite a bit of time. So it's very important to know what is pretty good food that is actually low rarity and pretty easy to make early because this stuff will not take a long time for you to craft, but will still be pretty good to get you through the entire crafting and looting phase of the game. So let's talk about my favorite early game food. There's actually four that stand out to me as stuff that you really should know if you want to know about early game food that's actually quite good and good rate. I'm going to sort of rapid fire them to you, but the first one we're going to talk about is honey garlic. Honey garlic is a 3x480 craft that crafts out of just one garlic and one honey. Keep in mind, every time you pick up honey, you're going to be getting two. So if you find two garlic and one stack of honey, you can make up to six 480s, which is quite good for a very fast craft and a very early craft. You can very easily find both honey and garlic over here in Alley, which is actually my favorite place to make this recipe. Anything that I do that passes through Alley, I'll generally make at least one or two early crafts of honey garlic because it will provide good enough healing for the early game and honestly it will be pretty decent even in the mid game. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be a lemon ice cream, which is a craft you probably didn't even know existed. Lemon ice cream is made by combining lemons and eggs. I know you probably thought I was going to craft out of ice, but no, it's lemons plus eggs, which is already confusing because lemons look like oranges. But anyways, that's besides the point. Lemon ice cream is actually quite good. It's 3x500 for just one lemon and one egg. It's pretty similar to honey garlic. It just heals you slightly more. I most often craft lemon ice cream when I'm going between archery and hotel, as you can get lemons over here in hotel and eggs up here in archery range. Lemon ice cream is way underrated and can provide you with a ton of decent food, being a 3x500. Keep in mind, baked potatoes and baked carp, they're only 2x600, so you're actually getting more healing over time with lemon ice cream, and it's a really fast craft as well. It's just lemon plus egg. This food is quite good, and you should know how to make it when it's appropriate. The next food on the menu is going to be pretty similar. It's gonna be choco ice cream. Choco ice cream is another one of these more slept on food recipes, but it is instead a 2x550 instead of a 3x like the ones we just talked about. 2x550 is actually extremely good for something that is just crafted out of ice plus chocolate. It's very, very good and similar to the one we just talked about, lemon ice cream. It's actually pretty convenient to make between hotel and archery range. But in general, choco ice cream at 2x550 is very good. Keep in mind, that is exactly on rate for hot ramen, even though that does have an upgrade path, but also stir-fry. Fried ramen. This 
is this is the same thing. You get two x five fifty for stir fried ramen. It's better than fried chicken, which is only two x five ten. If I can find it, there it is, two x five ten. So choco ice cream is better than fried chicken. It's the same rate as scrambled egg. It's really good, and people tend to sleep on it pretty hard. So choco ice cream, you should know how to make this ice plus chocolate. It's very simple. And of course, last but not least, one of the most common and popular early food crafts, garlic bread. Garlic bread is a 2x500, which puts it just below rate of lemon ice cream, chocolate ice cream, and of course, honey garlic, but it's still quite good. 2x500 can get you through quite a lot of early troubles, especially since it just crafts out of garlic plus your starting bread. So it's very, very easy to make if you go through any zones like alley, temple, or cemetery that have garlic. It's an essential food craft that you should know how to make, and as far as these early bread crafts go, it's definitely the best. Now, in addition to these sort of 2x and 3x early green crafts, there's also some single crafts that you should probably know about, but in general, the ones we just talked about, those are the ones you should actually definitely know if you are looking for that early game crafting. So let's talk about the singles. These are generally something where you craft stuff together, you get one good piece of food, but that's it. It's not a lot of food, but it's pretty decent food. Let's first talk about hamburgers, because you probably already know about them. Hamburgers are made out of meat plus bread. You start with bread, you get meat from like every animal on the map. So yeah, you've probably crafted this a billion times before. 1x600 is actually not bad, right? The only issue is that you only get one. It's still pretty decent and can get you through one sticky situation, but that's about it. In the same vein, we also have buns, which is bread plus coffee. Pretty good if you're in Uptown Dock or Cemetery early in the game. But keep in mind, if you have bread and coffee, you're actually just one alcohol away from making mocha bread, so you might want to see if you have alcohol on your route if you're making a lot of buns, and consider maybe going for mocha bread instead. Similar to buns, we also have choco pies, which are bread plus chocolate if you're in Avenue, Archery, or Uptown. This is pretty good for you to make some early food. I always feel bad eating choco pies though, because you can find a box to upgrade them to choco pie boxes, which are actually really good food, 2x733, but don't be afraid to just eat some early game choco pies if it's going to get you through a fight that you absolutely need to survive in that early game. And now some of the more niche single early game food is acupunctures and herbal medicine. The first one I want to go over, acupuncture needle, is alcohol plus needle. Mmm, delicious needles. You probably weren't thinking about this food as food because it was, you know, not really the kinds of food materials you'd normally be picking up. But if you're over here in hospital, you can get both needles and alcohol in just this one zone. So if you have a hospital start, you find alcohol, you find needles, and you're not going towards coffee to make mocha bread, it's very advisable to make a decent number of acupuncture needles every time you see them. As far as these early game singles go, acupuncture needles are absolutely stacked at 1x800. Extremely strong healing for a one-time use thing, but it, remember, only gives you one. But that 800 healing can absolutely win almost any early game fight, as no one's going to be expecting that much healing in the early game. Now similarly, you have herbal medicine at 1x650 that is crafted between an oriental herb and a turtle shell. This is most commonly crafted over here in Pond as both the materials are right there. Herbal medicine is pretty good for an early game craft, but additionally, if you're over here in Pond, remember herbs can also be used for orchids to make healing potions, so you're going to be splitting your focus between herbs and flowers and herbs and turtle shells. Now one more interesting thing about herbal medicine is that if you do go between Pond and Hospital, you can actually make something called Zen Vitality, which is a 2x900. Zen Vitality is one of the far more niche crafts in this entire game because you do require a bunch of materials that are not often seen together, but you can easily two zone this between hospital and pond because acupuncture needles are made entirely within hospital and herbal medicine is made entirely within pond. If you have a build that goes between these two zones in the early game, you can probably make a few Zen Vitalities and it's pretty good. Now, of course, we're not entirely done talking about early game food. There's a few other early game foods that you should be aware of that aren't good, but you probably still will find yourself crafting them in certain situations. If you're in a zone that can't craft any of the things I just talked about conveniently, or you just want to rush through your zone and it just happens to be there, it is okay to make some of this weaker early game bread food. Of course, I'm talking about three recipes which I am ashamed to craft sometimes, which is citrus cake being a 2x360, being lemons plus bread. I'm also talking about curry buns. Where are they? Curry buns. 
which is a 2x400 for bread plus curry powder. And of course, there's also egg buns, which is egg plus bread, another 2x400. The rate on this food is not very good. You'd much rather have something that's like a 3x500, like of course, lemon ice cream, or uh, where is it, honey, garlic. You also have choco ice cream, very good food, and garlic bread is better than all this as well. But if you're desperate, if you just need to make some of that early game food, you just wanna throw that bread away, you can make curry buns, you can make egg buns, you can also make that citrus cake. It's not great, it's not ideal, but you should be aware of these recipes just in case you need to make them. In general, my baseline for food in the early game is around the 480 mark, 480 to 550. My baseline for food in the mid to late game is 600 and above, so keep in mind since these are just like 360 and 400, they're not very good. But again, you should just be aware of them in case you need to make them, because some routes, they just need to make it because it's the only thing that's convenient. That pretty much covers it for the early game food. There's a few other good food recipes that I'm going to shout out that you should probably be aware of, but these aren't nearly as essential as the ones we've already covered. Generally speaking, these food recipes are a little more niche based on routing, so it's not that important that I shout them out. But let's first talk about one of the more common ones, which is cold noodles. Cold noodles is actually quite good food. It's a 2x650 that crafts out of ramen plus ice plus water. You start with water, so this part's pretty easy and ice water isn't too difficult to get either. Ice is fairly common between hotel, cemetery, and hospital, and ramen is also fairly uncontested at the moment between hospital, or sorry, between dock, temple, and alley. Cold noodles used to be far more common between hotel and archery back when archery had noodles, but it doesn't anymore. So this is a little bit less seen recipe these days. But if you happen to have extra ice water and you end up in one of these ramen zones, you should probably make some cold noodles as some pretty decent food. Another recipe that is very popular that honestly, I'm going to be honest with you guys, is a little bit overrated is actually garlic ramen. Garlic ramen is the best looking food icon in the entire game, it looks delicious, and you get 2x700s per craft, and honestly you can end up with a ton of garlic ramen out of just one lighter. One more interesting property of garlic ramen is that it can be crafted entirely within alley as ramen, lighters, and garlic can all be found there, but one of the bigger traps I've seen with garlic ramen is that people, they spawn alley, take all these materials, clutter up their inventory, or spend a lot of time crafting a ton of garlic ramen, and that just puts them really behind on their build, and all the materials in their future zones will be picked clean because they spent so much time crafting and so much time clearing out their inventory to finish all this food. Yes, garlic ramen is very good rate for food. Yes, garlic ramen is actually very good in the late game, and if you happen to stumble upon these materials, you're in pretty good shape for the mid to late game. However, it is a bit of an early game trap, so you should be aware of this before you commit to it when you're spawning an alley. There's a few other quick recipes I should obviously talk about. Of course, we're going to be talking about fish and chips, which is some of the strongest food in the game. But my brief disclaimer on fish and chips is that it's actually way more overrated than you think it is. Fish and Chips is a very complicated build craft that gets you 2x900 per craft. It's very powerful food and some of the most powerful food in the entire game, but the recipe is going to be running you all across the map if you want to finish any decent quantity of them. You're going to need potatoes from the top right side of the map between Temple, Pond, and Alley. You're going to need cod from the south, uh, what is this, southwest side of the map between Beach, Uptown, and Dock. You're also going to need lighters, oil, these very difficult to obtain materials that are very contested for a lot of builds. So. The recipe is daunting, but you're gonna be getting good food out of it. But the problem also is that you, if you only have one heated oil, you're only gonna be able to make two fish and chips because you're gonna end up with like one to two fish cutlets and then one french fries. You can only combine it for one set of fish and chips, which is not a lot of food for how far along the map it forces you to run. If you end up with a ton of heated oil, if you get a bunch off of wolves, bears, etc., it's maybe not a bad idea to go for this if you have a lot of time to kill in the mid to late game, but this is not food that you should really set out to craft every game. This is really something you should only go for if it just happens to line up that you can make a bunch of fish and chips. Of course, another food recipe we should talk about is first aid kits. 
You can craft this entirely within hospital. All three materials can be found there, but the problem is that alcohol and bandages are very contested and they're in fairly low quantities as well. So it's gonna be hard for you to make a bunch of these. In general, it takes a long time to craft. It takes a long time to get all the materials and you only end up with one X950. This is a huge amount of healing and yes, it's probably gonna win you any early game fight you decide to take, but you only get one. And honestly, a lot of good food recipes will give you a lot of food to let you survive over several fights. Spending all of your time crafting just one piece of food can oftentimes be a little bit overkill. So I think first aid kit, while it is very, very powerful on paper, it is a little bit of a trap and I would avoid it if possible. Now we're almost done with all the food recipes I wanted to cover today, but there's two more quick ones I wanna talk about, which are pretty underrated in the game called fish filet with egg and honey cod steak. Fish filet with egg crafts out of cod plus egg. Honey cod steak crafts out of cod plus honey. Cod is very plentiful and replenishes over time between dock, uptown, and beach. Honey is also fairly common in forest. If you're, you know, in these areas and you just want to walk over to a nearby area, you can generally find some in forest as well as eggs, which can also be found in forest. So you can very easily two zone a bunch of single 1x 700s between those two zones. This is just something that people tend to sleep on, honey cod steak and fish filet with egg. But keep in mind, between beach, uptown, and of course forest, these two zones, these two zones, it's really good food that people don't really take that often as you can find eggs and honey pretty frequently in the end game over here in forest. Now you made it to the end. We finally covered all the food I really wanted to talk about. There are a lot of food recipes in this game. Yeah, I know there's so many you could know. The first ones I talked about, those first five sets of recipes, that's really all you need to know to have a great time playing Eternal Return. There's a ton of food recipes, but those first ones are the most essential ones that you should always be aware of. But if you can master all of the food recipes, it makes you extremely flexible to always have options to make food at any stage in the game with any number of resources. If this food guide helped you in any way, please let me know. I want to know if you were struggling with food and this managed to help you in any way. But in any case, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.